In my native London, blue plaques adorn numerous buildings, identifying where luminaries lived or worked, and two capture my imagination. One, adorning St Mary's Hospital, proudly proclaims that in 1928, two floors above, Alexander Fleming discovered penicillin. Another embellishes 22 Ebury Street, Belgravia, where Ian Fleming, James Bond's creator, spent many years. Two Flemings, one wrote of saving lives, another ending them. Little did Alexander know his discovery could end in villainous Bondian fashion. To aviators, PIC means pilot in command, but without rapid behavioral changes, it will soon mean penicillin is concluded. Antibiotics are failing due to overuse, inspiring antimicrobial resistance. The bacterial baddies are winning the fight. Antibiotics are either naturally occurring or synthesized medications that destroy certain disease-causing organisms. With names that would grace any 007 movie, sulfonamides, aminoglycosides, cephalosporins, and of course penicillins, pharmaceutical companies have endeavored to develop new ones to knock off bugs, which are trying to knock us off. But ideas are drying up. Antibiotics only kill bacteria, specific drugs for specific bugs, with zero activity against viruses or fungi. Deploying antibiotics to kill a bug that's not susceptible may kill good bugs in your gut, allowing maleficent microbes to wreak havoc. And this can lead to problems like pseudomembranous colitis, where the entire large bowel might fall apart, a potentially fatal condition demanding urgent treatment. Nasty enough if this arose because the causative antibiotic was required, but imagine discovering that the drug causing colitis should not have been administered in the first place. For instance, being prescribed antibiotics for a sore throat, yes, that can be caused by strep bacteria and is often easily treated with penicillin, but it's frequently a viral illness for which antibiotics are totally useless or worse than useless. So instead of demanding antibiotics for your doctor or gulping down something left over in your home medicine cupboard, never a good idea, Ask your physician if he or she can do a simple office strep test first, and if negative, treat yourself with chicken soup, which definitely works, and bed rest. The other big problem is that when bacteria are exposed to small, non-fatal doses of these medicines, they evolve and become resistant, passing that capacity to their offspring, and then, to erroneously quote Apollo 13, Houston, we have a problem as another drug heads for the scrap heap faster than new meds can be discovered. And by the way, Apollo pilot Jack Swigert actually said, OK, Houston, we've had a problem here. Over 80% of all antibiotics are used in farm animals. While some are utilized to treat animal disease, most are dispensed to support and encourage growth for intensive food production. And some feel that the small amounts passing into human consumption contributes to the growing problem of antibiotic resistance. Over half of all antibiotic prescriptions are almost certainly inappropriate, and as such, doctors and veterinarians need to be part of the solution. The Global Chief Medical Officers Network, to which I proudly belong, have agreed to publicize this issue before it becomes a cataclysm. But we are few. We need others to lead the charge, and that's where you come in. Pilots are leaders by nature can help themselves and society at large by becoming informed. As in the sore throat example above, determine if antibiotics are medically necessary and then consider that while the FAA may allow you to fly while taking antibiotics such as zithromycin, think about the underlying condition. For instance, if you have a sinus infection, you shouldn't be flying. If you have a chest infection, you should not be flying. You get the picture? Additionally, antibiotics can cause delayed side effects, most commonly nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, not things you want to deal with while in the left seat, or any seat other than that in the smallest room. If taking an allowable antibiotic and the underlying conditions not a barrier to flight, wait at least 24 hours from the first dose before flight. Very often, if unwell, antibiotics may be one of several medications, so ensure that every drug you're taking is allowable. 
Those most commonly leading to issues are antihistamines and others that provoke sedation. Additionally, socializing while infected puts co-workers at risk, which is inconsiderate and puts further strain on antibiotic use. And pilots are considerate people. Be involved in healthcare decisions affecting you. If an antibiotic is not absolutely necessary, avoid it. Support the production of antibiotic-free foods, organic and free-range, and read the labels. At the very least, it can't hurt. Do all you can to win your own blue plaque, and please help us ensure that there's never one that tells us where antibiotics finally died. Thank <music> you.